Okay, so in this example here, we are going to add f and g where this is all purely generalized. There's no actual values. And we want to actually combine them together. I got alpha 1, I got alpha 2 is my shift. What's key here is my b values are the same. So they have a common frequency. And I'm going to add them together. And this is just saying, like, just if you do it, what do you end up? What's the r value going to be? And what's the alpha or the argument going to be? So if I'm going to add f of x, f of x plus g of x, it's sine. So I know I'm going to do the imaginary part of r1e to the ax plus alpha 1 times i plus the imaginary part of e a x plus alpha 2 i. All right, doing some algebra on my exponents, I know this is e a x i distributing the i as well times e alpha 1 Oh, let me try that again. Alpha 1i. Be careful with my notation. Alpha 1i plus r2e to the axi times e to the alpha 2i. Continuing on here, I know that I can take a look at I have a factor here that is common. So I have e to the axi times r1 e to the alpha 1i plus r2 e to the alpha 2i. <sighs> A lot of variables there. So, so, now what's it saying? I know What's going to happen is I'm going to put this into a GDC. And I know that this is going to end up where I'm going to have R E to some alpha I. Okay, when I add these two together. The R, the R is going to equal to what Ever the magnitude is of this value here. So therefore, r will be the magnitude of r1e to the alpha 1i plus r2e to the alpha 2i. Whatever the magnitude of that number is, or the r value is, is what r is. Similarly, the angle alpha will be the angle, or what we call the argument, of this same number here. Whatever we get will be alpha. This will be whatever the angle is will be what we get when we put this together. And so that's how I can show that. So therefore, f of x plus g of x is equal to the sine, r sine x plus, oh, ax plus, this is the alpha that I'll get. This is the R I'll get, which is what I wanted to show.